St. Paul is Centennial Town, Canada in all but name. Anyone without a project here isn't in, and the farther out the project is, the better. The town fathers set the pace by building a landing pad for unidentified flying objects. It turned out to be such a big tourist attraction that space sounds were piped in to add realism. So far, the only low-flying UFOs to be lured down are the paper variety popular with the kids. St. Paul, Alberta, a real people kind of place, but it's full of mysteries. Some citizens here believe in strange things like alien activity, while people like me, the rest of us, frankly, we all know that's hogwash. Like most giants of the prairies that we visited, St. Paul built the world's first UFO landing pad to celebrate Canada's centennial. But why a UFO landing pad? It just, it seems like a really strange choice for a town in rural Alberta that to date has no evidence of alien activity. But just because there is no evidence doesn't mean people haven't had extraterrestrial experiences. Let me give you some context. 30 seconds on the clock, please. Around the time the landing pad was created, the USA and the Soviet Union captured the world's attention with what is now known as the space race. Each country was battling to be the first to get feet on the moon, which of course happened in 1969. Around the world, the obsession with space travel was at an all-time high. And of course, with space travel comes space exploration. And with space exploration, aliens. Now, the space race technically ended after tensions diminished between the two countries in 1975, but this trend continued to take over pop culture for several decades. What you're about to see may disturb you. I sense much fear in you. Just to name a few. Now, back to the point. The landing pad in St. Paul capitalized on this period. As alien-obsessed UFO sightings began to increase across the world, this welcome mat in St. Paul quickly became a symbol of unity and universal acceptance. The community took on an adventure at the time mm -hmm. to just like put it out there. Like if you can imagine in 1967, people were reaching to the moon and yeah. looking at opportunities, not necessarily specifically for aliens to land, but to give that message that we are open, mm -hmm. not just to our surrounding area, but you know, we are an open community and it's always been that way. I mean, it's a people kind of place and we've maintained that. So this then put a mark in Canada's history that we are open to everybody. And when your husband built this, was this one of the relatively most bizarre things he'd ever made? Probably. <laughs> 130 tons. Yes, that's how much it is. <laughs> that is heavy. Yep, and when they put the pylons in and everything like this, then <clears throat> they had dirt piled up there and it to to supported make, it. To yes. support it to make the, the pad on the, the pad top. On the top. Really feels to me like St. Paul is a community that embraces public art and just mm -hmm. art in general. Art is just another language, yeah. another way yeah. to communicate yeah. your passions in life and I believe it needs to be acknowledged and respected for sure and celebrated. And we do have a lot of artisans local, yes. as you can see with the, just in the stonework, that, that is an amazing piece of work. Again, another form of language and celebrate, yes. Well, and a universal language. Yes, it say. is, yes, it is, <laughs> yeah. This community literally defines jumping on the bandwagon. Just across the way from the landing pad is the town's museum, where they've kept binders and binders of photos and articles from the town's history. We're here to see just how far they're willing to go. So cool, oh, so neat. Enclosed is the map for the UFO landing pad. We haven't assembled it as there is no area quite large enough in our office to do so. Dear sir, since you're the designer of same, 
Council felt that you would be the proper man to approach on a suitable colour scheme. How about yellow and blue with a fleur de lis motif? So in 1996, the Chamber of Commerce actually entered into contract with NDIS to run a UFO hotline. So it was a 1-800 number. Yes. And people would actually call in and they would take the written reports and they would send these back off to NDIS. No, they wouldn't. Yes. We called and no luck. The line is no longer in service, but Linda wasn't joking. People in places you couldn't even imagine called the town's personal UFO hotline to report sightings. For those searching for answers, this was a very real time in history. What I'm finding interesting is I'm seeing a lot of names, but it wasn't until further into my research that I'm hearing the name Margot Legacy. So Margot Legacy was the wife of Mayor Legacy, who was the mayor at the time of Centennial. So she had a huge influence not only in the town, but also over the 1967 Centennial projects. So these are the posters of the projects that were done. I'm not sure if all 100 would be here. But you what? can see. Can you? She just drew up a hundred posters? I'm not sure how long that would have taken her. Holy. Margot Legacy was a woman truly ahead of her time. A sculptor, a writer, a painter, a sketcher, you name it, she did it. Her contributions to the town and to multiple centennial projects were massive, but the landing pad was no small feat. I wanted to know about the impact she made on this iconic symbol of the town. Her daughter, Annette, donated her artwork to the museum shortly after Margot passed. Her life's work is paramount, it's unique, and it's so good within so many different mediums that it made me question how it was possible Margot was kept secret. Apparently, some of my father's friends in Montreal were drinking in the bar. Three of them were drinking, and they thought this would be a hoot just to build a landing pad for the UFOs, for Martians. Like, so they tell Dad, mm -hmm. and Dad, of course, tells Mom. And uh, her being so creative and taking things quite seriously in terms of creativity decided this was a very good idea. So she just took her pad and she started drawing a landing pad. I think what was remarkable about her is she excelled in each medium. Mm -hmm. There are several mediums here that are very well done. But the other thing that's really remarkable about her, I think, is that she did this in the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s, the 1970s, yes. when women were not doing any of this stuff. They were staying home. Yes. And she had six kids. I'm the youngest of six. <laughs> okay. But, uh, but she, she worked, she taught art in the, the high school, St. Paul Regional really? High. I'm very proud of the work that she did, for sure. Mm -hmm. I wish I had an ounce of her talent, but... I'm sure you do hidden okay. somewhere. Maybe you just need an alien experience for it to come <laughs> out. Coming here, finding a hidden artistic talent within this object's history wasn't the story I was expecting to find, but it's even more reason to come to towns like St. Paul. Because while the history that we discover might not be extraterrestrial, it's still pretty out of this world. You see an, alien, you see an, alien. an alien wearing this shirt? <laughs> Please return to the home. <laughs> That's amazing!